So what I was hoping to do today, really quickly, is tell you a little bit about who we are, uh, what we do, how we do it, and then relate it back to a couple personal stories to bring this all together. Uh, what our team, um, oh right, in the preamble, this terrible mustache, I tell you, it pains me to no end that I have it. My adorable four-year-old niece can't even look at me right now. And, however, uh, on, on, at a professional level, it's unbelievable that Movember in a short period of time, has got, they're going to generate almost $200 million this year for men's health from a, a movement that only started five years ago. In year one, they raised uh, $8,000. So again, the power of what happens when people decide to do something. So it's really staggering. But again, I can't wait in a few weeks to get this uh, off my face. So you know, we've heard it lots today. What's the focus of TEDx? And it's really about how do we make our time, how do we make our talent, and how do we make all the things that we contribute way more meaningful. And that's a lot of what our team tries to do. Um, but part of the uh, conversation I was hoping to have with everyone today is how this concept of share by default uh, can really revolutionize philanthropy and how people in the room here or anyone watching over the internet, how we really have to think as volunteers, as donors, uh, someone sitting on the board about how well we share internally as an organization and how quickly we can share the right type of information to the people that we work with to make transformative decisions. So Framework, the organization some friends and I started almost 10 years ago, is committed to creatively connecting people to causes they care about. So we started with a really simple idea that people will get together and help um, community if they're asked. So we go out and uh, make that asking happen. So our Time Razor event is a bit like speed dating for volunteerism. Uh, the night of the evening, people can come together, uh, meet with dozens of nonprofits, and try to match their skills to an organization's needs. So if you're interested in the arts or the environment, healthcare, social services, you'll be able to come to one of our events and really make that match in a meaningful way. Once you've made the match, you then become eligible to bid on all of this great artwork that we have on display. And the currency, as you've heard, is not about bidding uh, money on the works of art, you bid volunteer time. So if Jamie and I like the same work of art, he bids 20 hours, I bid 30, goes back and forth, Jamie's outbid me with 75 hours, he gets to place that with the charity he just met with and has 12 months to complete his pledge. So, and the other big twist is we've worked with a lot of our corporate partners to pay the artist market value in advance of the event. So we really took a step back before we started all of this and say, you know, how do we make sure that in all of the different ways we can support community, emerging artists who typically get asked to donate their work to a charitable cause, how can we pay them? Uh, nonprofit organizations that are looking for relevant and meaningful skilled opportunities, how can we make that uh, possible? And then, of course, um, people who come to the event where it's not one cause is more important than the other about how all of these causes uh, really can make the community um, uh, better. So you heard some of the stats earlier. We're very proud about some of our hours, 96,000 meaningful hours that have been generated. Uh, as of tomorrow, or Ottawa Time Raisers tomorrow night, we'll have invested uh, $500,000 in the careers of artists and 6,500 Canadians have come out to pledge and participate. So while the stats are really important and we're excited about them, it's really about some of the stories that we hear from the nonprofits that we work with about the quality of the matches. And I want to point that out for a simple reason. We're a small team, four staff, 250 volunteers, and we really try to live the values that we're promoting, that we have to enable our team to take a lead role in some of this work to make it happen. But it's not easy. Uh, it's not easy to engage really busy people sometimes when we have so much stuff going on across the country. So we have different work plans for all of the different events. As you can imagine, trying to write checks to almost 200 artists a year and then getting all of their art and distributing it across the country, not easy to do. So we have to be super, super efficient. We squeeze, as we say in the office, we squeeze water out of rocks. Uh, so we've come up with this credo about how do we, as an organization, very thoughtfully create information once distribute it widely, make it accessible in multiple places. And part of that is driven by some core values that we think are really important. And the core value that encompasses all of it is share by default. And again, this sort of might seem like a very straightforward concept, but to make it work from a nonprofit management standpoint, for anyone in the room who sits on a board, who might be a treasurer or a bookkeeper, volunteering their time to make some of this stuff happen, how do you actually become a more transparent organization over time? How do you really collaborate with other like-minded organizations? How do you become a learning organization? And how do you meaningfully engage people in your organization? Like again, easy in theory, sometimes hard to do in practice. So what we wanted to show you today is just three very qu uh, quick examples of some of the sharing that we're doing and how we want to bring this forward. So um, 
we created this section on our site, uh, Sharesies, and it's a way that we are sharing a whole bunch of our mission critical work online and in real time. So our scorecard, uh, a very simple red, yellow, green. Green, things are working really, really well. Red, it's the stuff that keeps me up at night. And it's available for the whole world to see. It's one version of the truth. So I, uh, here's an example of one. And if you scroll down on our, uh, online on our website, you would see some of the financial management stuff. As a small nonprofit, we're trying to manage a lot of grants. We show it in red. It's the stuff that keeps me up at night. And I, we just decided that it wasn't the type of conversation we were going to hide from the rest of our network about what's holding us back from doing more work. It was a relief when we started to do this. Next example, um, we've gone a long way to align our social procurement strategy. So if we were to spend money on printing or if we were to spend money on catering, then is there a social enterprise somewhere in the country that we can actually procure that from? Again, this, how do you make that happen? Could be difficult to do because our team has put a lot of our budget online and all of the uh, invoices online. Our auditor uh, was thrilled and couldn't believe that the invoices from some of the social enterprises were online and available for people to see. So we can, with a great deal of reliability, um, show that 46% of all of the printing we did last year went to a social enterprise across the country. Feel really, really good about that. Uh, final example, um, and this is a piece that's quite visceral. We actually share all of our major proposals uh, that go to foundations in uh, different um, um, uh, community foundations and government foundations. Uh, online in real time in advance of the proposal deadline. So as we're making changes to our proposal, it's available for the whole world to see, including the budget, including the way that we report against it, and it's all connected to our social platform, so when we make an update, it gets spread through Twitterverse and through our LinkedIn profile, and we encourage our community to comment to make sure that before we submit, we have the highest quality proposal possible. And for an organization our size, um, when we're trying to write, this is an example here of a proposal that we submitted to the Toronto Community Foundation. Uh, it went up, again, before the deadline was done. And even if we don't get this grant, which we really hope we do, it's going to stay online. If there is any nugget of learning that would be of interest to another organization, it's there for them to see. So there's uh, some professional fundraisers I've showed this to that literally want to throw me out the window uh, because they feel like I'm, we're giving away too much of our intellectual property, where we claim it's like, hey, you know what, if there's some good ideas here and it doesn't get funded or if it does get funded, there's no reason why this can't be available to more people in our community. So we've been doing this now for several years and we've learned a lot of things along the way. And um, some observations for anyone in the room that's uh, considering doing some of this type of sharing is you really have to make it a governance question. You have to have a conversation around your board table to say, how do we share information internally? Uh, how do we share information externally with our stakeholders? And you have to be like really, really dedicated to it. And all of the things that we're sort of seeing in nonprofit management, we heard a few examples earlier about what slows organizations down from making optimal decisions, is what we've seen over time is, again, if you, again, hoard some of your mission critical information, then it's really hard to keep up with all of the stuff that's happening around us. And again, we work with over 350 nonprofits across the country, small arts and culture, large environmental, and speed uh, to try to solve problems is probably the biggest thing that organizations are trying to catch up with. So, and some of this is informed with some of the, the scanning that we do across um, a, a whole bunch of domains. We, we, we spend a lot of time uh, taking a look at what's happening socially, uh, economically, politically, technologically, and we're doing all of this scanning, blogs and research and what's happening uh, uh, with different levels of government, and there's this whole notion that transparency, accountability, and ways to connect to your uh, constituents to build trust is like the emerging trend. And uh, so I'm going to skip through this. This is an older version of my presentation here, uh, so I'm just going to skip through here to get to this one quote. And uh, without reading it sort of word for word, there's a technology company in San Francisco that about five years ago made a really, really big decision. They were having reliability and trust uh, problems with some of their uh, customers. And so the CEO made a decision saying that their core infrastructure, their, the, the thing that, again, allowed customers to sort of uh, have trust in their, in their products and services was going to be tied to the internet. It was a really radical concept. So when their uh, technology was working well, um, it would show up in green, and when it wasn't, it was showing up in red. And after they made that decision to sort of share that, everything about their whole business model changed. And the way that they were able to interact with their customers has now made them one of the single largest software companies in the world. But it was a very, very big decision that the organization had to make years ago to build this type of trust and transparency. So um, again, what we're seeing here is share by default is sort of the new normal. 
And uh, so how do some of these trends relate to engagement? Um, well, you know, City of Calgary is a perfect example. Uh, City of Calgary where you have uh, uh, vital signs, where there's a whole bunch of indicators around the state of uh, engagement and different approaches that people can get involved. Your mayor and uh, the city has done something pretty remarkable where uh, Calgarians can go in and uh, actually play around with their budget and uh, be a, a, an active role in how participation can happen in building the type of city that you guys want. Some pretty um, amazing stuff. So when we look at some of the broader trends, we're at the macro level, there's lots of time and money. You know, across the country, $35 billion in financial resources, $2 billion volunteer hours that are contributed. But you actually go talk to a whole bunch of leaders in the nonprofit sector, no one ever feels that there's enough time or money coming in to sort of do the work that they do. There's, so there's something missing in between to make all of that happen. So again, in this notion that there's problems out there that need fixing, um, sometimes there's, uh, and there's people out there that want to do it, but then there's often stuff, you know, uh, we've heard a few examples around nonprofit leaders that want to do things but can't because there's budget reports and reporting to funders and all of these things that sort of stop us. So how do we uh, move forward? Um, so again, uh, I'm just going to skip through here again. My apologies, this is a different version of, uh, uh, of the presentation. So, I want to geek out for just one second to give you an example of some stuff our team has been uh, uh, prototyping. That we were working, um, data, as, as we know, data information can flow in really remarkable ways. What this illustration is supposed to show is that you can have budget information from one spreadsheet from organization A and budget information from another organization B that funnels into another budget template that can be live, online, and in real time and it utterly shatters the way that information could be shared between funders and grantees. And so when our team tested some of this stuff, we just couldn't really believe the implications. So again, here we have budget template A, budget template B. If uh, uh, someone in organization A makes a change, then all of that information syndicates in real time. And uh, again, I've built probably 100 different budget templates in my time, and when we tested this, it was really crazy. And it was really like, it was my Matrix moment for any of you who've seen that movie. And this is a reenactment when we ran that simulation um, where is, you know, Morpheus who, uh, who, who holds out the red pill and the blue pill, looks to Neo and say, you know, if you, if you take the red pill, it's gonna open your mind to the Matrix. And because it was so simple, it's so cost effective and it completely transformed a whole new paradigm on how nonprofits can share information with funders and vice versa. It doesn't take a lot of time, it doesn't take a lot of expertise, but it really takes a, a change in my set, mindset about how you want to share your information. So again, yeah, just a little bit close up of me. I really had, I, like, it just it hurt my head. It was so powerful. <laughs> but it's not about the technology. It really isn't. It's about change of mindset. It's about how you want to spend your time and your talent to causes that are important to you. So this is a photo of my mom and I. Uh, almost 11 years ago. A really remarkable woman who did tons of stuff for the community. She spent uh, years helping raise millions of dollars for our local community center. She spent tons of time on the, on the swim deck when my siblings and I were uh, uh, in competitive swimming in our hometown. And she was also very involved at, at the Y. And uh, it, it was, so she passed away about 11 years ago uh, this week. And uh, she went through all of the stages of cancer and during the very end, during the uh, sort of acceptance phase, it was really a conversation of, you know, at the next level of problem solving, she, she, you know, she got over the cancer a little bit, um, but she said, you know, all of this stuff is interrelated, that, you know, cancer is important, but so are all of these other causes. This is a photo of my Uncle Dave, who passed away a year ago, from prostate cancer, a type of preventable cancer where if he went to the right clinic, it would have been picked up in time. So if we go back to this next slide, you know, is, is, is one type of cancer more important than the other? How do we decide where time and resources go? You know, these are the problems that I know a lot of people in the room deal with all the time, and it's people that we hear with all across the country uh, uh, want, want to get to the answer to. So again, it's not about uh, the technology, it's about the mindset. And so what our organization is trying to do is uh, talk about share by default. Shares these. We have, uh, we're going to try to work with as many nonprofits to get share by default in the water supply. And uh, we really look forward to um, talking to as many people who are interested in saying there's a whole new way to work in nonprofit management. And uh, what is your organization willing to share? And we'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>